Jennifer is in the profession. How welcome are you? Uh, how welcome are scientists, dentists, to get into the scientific research on, on things other than teeth? Now, they, they, they make a hand over fist. If you're prepared to do research on teeth, you know, it's incredible. Don't worry about any financial crisis. Oh, what money do you want? You can much as you want. Because teeth are singularly the most important tissue in the whole body. Trust me on this. Trust me. You can bite your way through anything. <laughs> as long as you can bite your way through it. They don't want to know. There we go. They don't want to know. Yes, John. Yeah, just to add a bit on the thyroid, is that Dr. Derek Peakfield, who's an advisor to Thyroid UK, he came out strongly saying that fluoride uh, was a toxin to the thyroid and should be banned, basically, and he, he was got the deep trouble with that. The there we go. There we go. There we go. And that's why what we're doing, by the way, is so important, because um, I, I think some of the things that we're doing, recognising that their strategy... They've got a two-fold strategy here to keep people away from the literature. One is endorsements. Don't have to worry about fluoridation because every World Health Organization, the CDC, the ADA, the BDA, the BFA, blah, 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 hundred of them, all endorse fluoridation. And they're all experts and, and you don't have to worry about it. And then that's all backed up by the white-coated individuals that appear in your local community. They say it's good. So that's one half of their tactic. The other half of the tactic is to say that the opponents of fluoridation are a bunch of crazy loons. They are junk scientists. They get all their information from the internet. So our counterattack on that is threefold right now. Well, of course, there's been a continual counterattack with the journal Fluoride, but they've kept that out of the PubMed. One is that we have a professional statement. We've now got 3,060 odd scientists, doctors, dentists, nurses, pharmacists, veterinarians, and what, you name it, professionals who've said we want to see an end to fluoridation. And at the heart of that was the NRC review. Okay. The second thing we've done is that 15 of those people, plus a couple of others, are in a videotape called Professional, Professional Perspectives on Water Fluoridation. This is 29 minutes long. How many people will watch this? Uh, a good proportion, but those who haven't, you can watch it online. You can get it here. You can get it here at a bargain price. A bargain price. And what's more, whatever they tell you, you can make as many copies as you want. And I think this is the way to go. I, I, let me come back on that in a moment. The third thing, of course, is the book. Between those three attacks, I think we can remove this notion that there's no diet debate on this. There clearly is a debate. And secondly, the science is on our side, not on their side. That's what I think we've established. Now, this is the way I recommend that you work. Don't try to argue your local dentist and, or your local doctor to agree with you. You might be lucky to have somebody who's open-minded who hasn't taken a position, and they might discuss the issue with you. The chances are the moment you start to talk, their eyes will roll, and they will look at you as somebody from outer space because that's the way that you've been portrayed to them. So this is what I suggest you do. You say, doctor, dentist, doctor, as you know, I'm not an expert on, on, on science, um, but recently I watched this videotape, and on this tape there are 15 scientists, including a Nobel Prize winner and a few other important people, Sir Ian Chalmers, amongst others, and they have some pretty disturbing things to say about water fluoridation. Now, I know you probably got your position. Don't let them talk about it. Don't let them tell you you're already crazy. No, I say, I, um, you may have a position on this. I don't know. But I want it. Would you be kind enough to spend 28 minutes and look at this and tell me if I should be concerned or not? But you're a professional. I'm not a professional. I need your professional advice. Please watch this and tell me if, you, if I should be concerned. Now, this way they don't feel insulted. They don't feel challenged. They actually feel rather pleased. to, to and, and most people like to help people. So he'll go in and say, like I did 14 years ago, when my wife says, read this stuff. And I, I, I read it with the one intention in mind, as quickly as possible, to find the thing where these would show that these anti-fluoridation people were just not scientists, that they confused fluorine with fluoride. That's what I thought. 
chemistry, a chemistry professor. Okay. After a few hours, I realized I couldn't find that thing. But he will probably watch this with that intention. Oh, I'll quickly find that these people are a bunch of rascals. They're untrained, they're unqualified, and they're talking out of the back of their necks. And then if he watches it, and he's, he's trying to do this, he'll get through 28 minutes and he won't be able to do it. And you might have got him to start thinking. It may not be enough, but that's the way I would go about it. That's, that's the art of diplomacy. It would be terrific if anybody can get it. It's, it's the same as that. It's so tantalizing. Wouldn't it be great if you get the Conservative Party to change their position? Yes, it would be great. Wouldn't it be great if you can get on Panorama? Yeah, wouldn't it be great if you get this on television? There are so many, I mean, we've tried umpteen times to get on places like opera and all those other things. As soon as you mention the word fluoridation, boing. They don't, don't always put the phone down right away, but it's darn close. However, I've got to tell you, we, we do have people now trying to get me on some prominent talk shows in the United States, and who knows when the breakthrough is going to come. It, it, it probably will come at some point. Is there no litigation going on in the States? Uh, there's always litigation going on in the States. But until somebody gets heavy... Yeah, that's, a lot of people feel that, that nothing's going to happen. And maybe I feel this way in a two years' time. This is my best shot. You've got the best of me in this book <laughs> and two other people. I've given this everything I can. I can now go to my grave with the notion on my gravestone will have, it only have two things on it. One, he did his damnedest to stop fluoridation but failed. <laughs> or it will have on it, he was one of the group of people that ended fluoridation on the face of the earth. So this book is very important to me. Not that I told you I was ill. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm going to do the unenviable thing, because I know Paul can talk for another two hours. Yes. And I know you can probably ask lots of questions, but we actually do have this until 4.30, and we have got to clear up. So I am going to cut the discussion short at the moment. Um, and if you want to know more, do, do use the Fluoride Action Network website get information and also the book and there's leaflets here. Um, but first of all, what I'd like to do is to thank Paul for an entertaining, enlightening, extremely detailed um, and expose, in some ways, yeah. of the whole water fluoridation issue. We've been very lucky to have him this afternoon and I'd like to show our appreciation for him. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you, thank you for listening so closely to this. You, uh, you probably discovered, you didn't tell me, I, I grew up in England. I grew up in uh, Brighton. I came a few times to Southampton to play your university, uh, play cricket here. And um, I said in Australia, if you think things are bad in the UK, by the way, the Australian situation on fluoridation is the most depressing and distressing situation. You wouldn't believe how Australians have just laid down and let their government told them, you're going to have fluoridation whether you want it or not. No, we're not going to debate the issue. We're not going to answer your questions. And you're not going to have a referendum. You're going to get fluoridation. And those Aussies that I know from cricket, you know, bloody hell, they're fast bowlers from Linwater. But they fight like hell. You can never beat them, right? You've got to put up state through their hearts to stop the Australian cricketers. They struggle up from the dead to win the test matches. Ah. And yet, when it comes to fluoridation, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? And I said, I, I, I said this in, in Australia. I said, I forgot which town this was in. I think it was Brisbane. I said, I was a fast bowler when I was a young person. And I said, I feel as if I've trained hard, I am super fit, and I'm polishing the ball on my flannels, and I've got to the end of my 25 run, yard run, and I'm waiting, and the bloody Australian batsman won't even come out to the wicket. <laughs> That's right. No one would debate me. Nobody. 
and it's perfectly safe. Okay, so that was a little post, postscript. Now. <laughs> Exploration, we, we, you know, we still carry on. There was a mention about the judicial review. It's actually now going to be in January, 19th and 20th of January, at the High Court in London. Um, we also like anybody that's not in contact with us, and I think we have got people who perhaps aren't normally in contact. We do have a, a list for names and addresses and an email. We do do newsletters, um, and we put out notices of events. And if you'd like to be included in those. <laughs> Please put your details on the sheets here. Also, I don't know about 25%. I think you would have to get a book from the States. But locally, as I said, um, October Books, which is in Portsmouth, and again, the details are on some leaflets here, will order copies of Paul, um, Paul's book. Um, so you can get them locally. It won't be out for the first, but they will be pre-orders. So, and it's good to support a, a local bookshop. Yes, yes. As well. Um, how much is it? I don't know. A good bargain is what I would probably say. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. yes, a good bargain. good bargain. I don't know what the British price will be. And so I've already read it. It's a very, very good book. And it's actually got a lot and lot of detail of science, but it is very readable. So I would encourage people to, to get their own copies. And I also encourage you to do the things that we've been doing for a long time, which is writing to the Strategic Health Authority, writing to the PCT, writing to your MPs, writing to councillors, making your views known, um, and keeping the pressure on the authorities. You know, we have an SHA which, um, by April 2012, will disappear. But in the meantime, it has the power to request water fluoridation. The thing is a nonsense, because after that time, when local authorities will be in charge none of the local authorities would probably implement the measure. So we need to keep that pressure on these organisations. And the people who put the pressure on best are you. <laughs> All right? So let's see the sport. Yeah. Um, there's a website um, which is all, is all to do with petitions, and a lot of them have been successful. One or two of them have. They make you money. Okay. So it's... Um, is this for your freedom? against fluoridation Facebook page for those who use Facebook which um, one of the members Stuart Debert tweeted out today and used it to advertise the meeting and we do have a blog which is ably run by Bill um, sitting in the front here which keeps all the up to date news and there's some more historical material on our own website as well and we actually run a petition on our website I think. Yeah. yeah we were talking about this exposure in the media in America there's the conscious media network Okay. To air your views. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you heard of them. No. Uh, um, CMN.com, I think. Okay. If you have a look at that. Um, Could you send me an email with the details on it? Yeah, yeah, because I think they do air, air your views. Yeah, good, easy. good, 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 good. And, and lastly, it's also to pay for your water funding. Yes. I said at the beginning, I was, didn't know when we came in this room how many people have been here, and I wondered whether I'd be able to say it's really good to see so many people. And of course the answer is it is really good to see so many people. So thank you very much for your support and your interest. And can I add my thanks too? It was a terrific audience. You were so patient. You were two and a half hours almost now. And also I want to thank you for something else. Because when I was here for those uh, little public pantomimes in the football stadium, <laughs> One of the things that absolutely disgusted me was the card, the postcard, that the taxpayers were paying for, which says, um, you know, nice little bit of propaganda, smiley face, and then you were to send this card in, but they only had a place to check yes. You were for fluoridation, and yet despite what I thought was outrageous public relations manipulations, 72% 
of the people polled here um, said no. And I think that was a huge acclamation for the ability to citizens to educate themselves and educate their friends and neighbors. That was an incredible result. Gave us a lot of hope. A lot of hope. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much.